It's time for another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and the topic in today's drop is Carolina basketball. The Tar Heels are sort of on a roll, four games, four wins in a row, three quad one wins. I think that probably constitutes a bit of a roll. We'll see if it's if they win this week at State and if the Heels beat Syracuse on Saturday and they're at six in a row with four of the wins coming away from Chapel Hill, two, three of them true road games, all quad one win games, I would say, yeah, that qualifies as being on a roll. As it stands right now, I want to talk about another trend that's been kicking in here during this four-game win streak. I'm going to toss aside the Charleston Southern game. They didn't need to close that one out because they had it in hand against a team that was 339 in the net that night, so we're not really going to get – a whole lot of value out of squeezing that lemon, but we are going to squeeze the Oklahoma pit and Clemson lemons so we can get more information. So we can learn more about the many positives that this team is starting to accumulate. And the, what I really want to get into here and is, is something that is highly impressive is how this team has closed. If you think about what they did, shutting the door in Oklahoma when they made a little push late. When you think about what they did at Pitt, when they were able to just sort of squash them a little bit, close that thing with with a little with a little emphatically and win by 13. And by the way, they beat Oklahoma by 12. And then at Clemson, they just put the kibosh on the Tigers late and closed them out. Our wonderful David Sisk, uh, who's a longtime college AAU and high school coach, had a great film review about them closing out Clemson. If you have not seen it, go over to our site, tarheelillustrate.com. You can see it there with all of his outstanding descriptions and breakdown of what went into each of the sequence that he that he uh, used film on. And by the way, you can become a Tar Heel Illustrated subscriber for just $8.33 a month. You need that in order to be able to see David's work. And it's worth it, guys. It's the same price it was when I took over the site August 1st, 2014. Nothing else has remained the same price. Nothing except us. All right. So let's get into these three games. Closing out Oklahoma, closing out Pitt, and closing out Clemson. All three games away from Chapel Hill, the last two true road games. Carolina's first two true road games of the year. So Carolina had a decent lead on Oklahoma throughout the second half, but then the Sooners made a push. And they cut that thing to five points. And some people may have been getting a little bit nervous there at uh what's not they can get Spectrum Center now. I think that's what they call they, they change the name in the arena in Charlotte so often. I know they had two different names when I used to cover the Bobcats. So I used to get flustered, like I didn't even know what to put in there half the time because the name changed a lot. Anyway, it's the Hornets Arena, and there were some fans that got a little antsy when Oklahoma cut that thing to five points. But then Carolina kicked it into gear a little bit, kicked it up a notch, as the great Emeril Lagasse used to famously say all the time on his TV show. Over the final 328 of the game, Carolina held Oklahoma two for seven from the floor. While the Tar Heels scored 11 points, they outscored the Sooners 11 to four in that span and 181.69. That wasn't a super long closeout, but it was a closeout. And that kind of got the wheels churning on this. So let's fast forward to the Pittsburgh game this past week, last Tuesday at Peterson Event Center. Carolina held Pitt to three field goals over the last nine plus minutes of that game. The Panthers were three for their last 13 from the floor. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, Carolina actually outscored the Panthers 21 to 13 to win 70 to 57. So that was a game that was still within reach for Pitt. And Carolina just kicked it up a notch again and outscored the Panthers by eight to go ahead and win by 13. They turned a five point game into a 13 point win. Just like against Oklahoma, they turned a five-point game into a 12-point win. Let's go to Little John Coliseum on Saturday. Carolina, over the last 5.02 of the game, held Clemson to no points, no field goals, nothing. Tigers were 0 for their last six from the floor. 
Carolina scored seven points. Carolina wins 65-55. It was a 58-55 game when that stretch started, and the Tar Heels closed them out. In fact, Carolina had a 17-8 stretch to win the game as well. I think it was 48-47, and you could see them sort of kicking it up a little bit. And they did what they had to do. They got some important buckets, but they got stops, and they forced misses. So in this span, and these are all different time frames, obviously, so I'm twisting numbers a little bit to make the point, to hammer home the point here. But understand what I'm saying. In that final 328 against Oklahoma, and in the final nine plus minutes against Pitt, and in the last five minutes against Clemson, if you combine all that time, these three stretches I'm talking about, the Tar Heels limited their opponents five for 26 from the floor, which is 19.2%. These were all three quad one wins, one on neutral site. One were two, one was a true road game. Oklahoma and Clemson this past weekend were both ranked in the top 16. Oklahoma's a good basketball team. They won again this past weekend. I think Pitt's an NCAA tournament team. So when you close these guys out and you beat the Sooners by 12 and the Panthers by 13 and the Tigers by 10, and if you go back to yesterday's drop about how they were they held all these teams way below their scoring averages, and in the last two games against Pitt and Clemson shut down their stars, again, it's a nice trend, and it's just a week, or in this case, just three games, but it sure says a lot. And it's close to being a legitimate trend. Just like I said, they're close to being on a roll. These things kind of go hand in hand. Do they close out NC State? How do they handle the last five minutes in, against the Wolfpack if that's a close game? How do they handle the last five to eight minutes at home against Syracuse, which isn't a bad club? Syracuse could come in there and beat the Tar Heels. How do they handle that if they're in a position to close them out? One thing I could tell you is when Hubert Davis talks to his team with five minutes left in these upcoming games, whether it's this week or three weeks from now or in February or in March, they are accruing the the coat of armor to handle stuff like this. They can deal with it. Things are going to clank off of them because they will mentally and physically and collectively understand, know that they can do this. They can sort of flex up a little bit, get a few buckets, get some stops, take care of business, get a win, go home. That's what they've shown. They've shown this toughness. They've shown this resilience. They've shown an amazing spirit on the defensive end. And the communication on defense has gotten really good the last couple of games. And you need to be able to do that in these situations because it's usually louder late in the game in these close games. You really got to be able to communicate with your teammates and trust your teammates, trust their communication as well. And the Tar Heels are doing these things. And these wins over Oklahoma, Pitt, and Clemson with yesterday's drop and today's drop combined are an absolutely positive, positive, positive sign of the direction this basketball team is headed. If you're excited about the way the Heels have closed out these last three opponents, if you're excited about the fact that they got three straight quad one wins and four overall, go ahead and click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe Share the videos, share everything we do, share our channel with all your Carolina friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you get updates every time we upload a show or a video or whatever it is. And remember, guys, we go where the Tar Heels go. Everywhere they go in football and basketball, I'm there. So, and a lot of times other staff is there. So make sure you check back with us all the time after every after the Tar Heels play and go to our site. TarHillIllustrated.com. It's just 833 minutes of drop in the bucket, and you can have access to a ton of information about the Carolina football and basketball teams that you love. So make sure you go on over there and do that. Plus, it helps keep these videos going because we are working in concert together. We are all part of the same operation, and the more people that subscribe, the better we can cover the team because we have more resources to do so. Anyway, Appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll be back uh, Friday because we have 
no, no, we have one Wednesday. I'll have a football drop for you guys Wednesday. No drop Thursday because we have a basketball game Wednesday night. So I'll do another basketball drop on Friday, but there'll be a football drop coming for you tomorrow. So make sure you come back and check us out for that. Thanks for stopping by.